Hey, it's Robbie from Southern California, and I'm going to take you along with me today and just kind of talk about a few things I want to bring up because I've heard a lot of different things from different gardening people, and I want to give you my thoughts. Here is a pencil box. We're going to get a lot into this because this has turned out to be a great way to propagate seeds. I'm using uh, cupcake wrappers. Okay, I'll tell you why I'm using cupcake wrappers. I walked into the 99 cent store one day. They had them three for a dollar. I bought a ton of them and I haven't used them. And Gary's like, do you really need them? Yes, because I can separate my seeds in here. Just throw some seeds in here. I have a mini greenhouse and then they grow. So I've taken out in here all the broccoli. And these are wonderful. You can get them at Walmart. We'll get a whole lot into it, how I do all kinds of stuff with these. But they're like a dollar and they're reusable and they're stackable. That's not what we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to talk about seedlings. And that's what I want you to see. See how many I put in here? Technically, you only need a couple. This is red Swiss chard. It's supposed to be green, but it came from my garden, so obviously it's red. But I took the broccoli out. These are the broccolis I kind of pulled out. So what I'm doing here is I'm just planting them. I hear a lot of people say, oh, you... You know, how many things you should actually grow. And I've heard a lot of things like, oh, you only need one tomato plant because you're going to get tons of tomatoes from that one plant. You only need one. So I've actually seen this at nurseries. People buying just one plant. And it's like, why are you buying one plant? Well, we only want some beefsteak tomato plant tomatoes and we only need a few. Well, first of all, go get yourself some cherry tomatoes, I tell them. One. And don't buy one. Nature did not design anything to survive 100%. Let me get these labels so I know. So on the paper cups, I write broccoli. I'm going to need um, a few more. And the thing is, what are the odds that they're going to make it? I don't know. You buy one, and yeah, maybe it will live. But then, let's say you put it out in the garden... And you got really bad weather, rain hits it, knocks over, it breaks, it's gone. Okay, so, you know, then what do you do? Start over? It might be too late. I would never do one unless you didn't have a choice. If you don't have a choice, then you do one. So that's something I really wanted to talk about because so many times things happen. Now, if you're starting seeds in the house... Start more than what you need. First of all, you don't know if they're going to make it, number one. And when they do make it, what is the worst thing that could happen if you started even 10, 15 too many? Well, let's see. We can ask my daughter, who's now gardening big time in her yard. She calls me up. Do you want? No, I. my yard is full. And she'll go, I have to get rid of them. She acts like they're puppies. <laughs> And she runs around the neighborhood giving everybody squash that she grew because she grew too many. That's wonderful. You know, put a sign out. Put it out in front of your house on a table and say free whatever. People will pick it up and take it home. That's the worst. I think the worst that would really happen, in my opinion, is you get all hyped up and excited that you're going to grow something. And then a bird comes and chomps it. A caterpillar comes and eats the whole plant and sets you back for the year. Um, nature comes in and blows um, branches on it and takes it out. And the plant goes into shock for whatever reason. You got the wrong potting soil and it died. If you had a few different plants going, the odds are I think you're going to be a lot happier. So what if you ended up with too many tomatoes or too much of something? You got neighbors, and if, you, if your neighbors don't want it and you don't have neighbors, it turns into your soil then you don't have to buy that much soil. Now, speaking of soil, as I'm doing this, this in here is potting soil. I will only use, did I label this? Yes, potting soil when I'm doing tiny seedlings like this. Now these got a little leggy because they were in the house, but you know what, they might make it. And like I said, I've got more than I need, so I'm gonna get these going, and then that's a big chunk, we don't need that. And then whatever makes it, makes it, I have no idea where I'm going to put these at. I haven't even started out in the garden. I'm chopping things out. I'm moving some pots around. I'm making fabric pots, which I absolutely love. 
in my bird garden. If you didn't see the video, go check that out. I have some camouflage leggings that I bought. Oh, that's a funny story. I don't know if you want to hear a story on that because we're not talking about that, but I have a whole bunch. Well, the camouflage will go in the bird garden because the bird garden, I want it to look kind of natural. But in the rainbow garden, I can use, no, we don't need that big piece. I can use, you know, some colorful ones. And on my deck garden, I can use more colorful ones. You want to make sure when you're transplanting seedlings that they have really good contact with the soil. If you put it in there and they don't have good contact, you won't know there's too much airspace and that could kill them too. But then again, if you made extra and had a bunch extra, okay. So it's a plant. Like I said, look at nature. Nature did not intend for all seeds to grow. Some of the seeds were supposed to be bird food. Some of the seeds were supposed to be insect food. Some of the seeds that grew, I'm talking about seedlings growing, not counting the ones that didn't grow. Some of, some of them, you know, intended to become soil again. So the intentions were never that all of them are gonna make it or we'd be, there'd be no room for us. We'd be plowing everything under because there's so much. I would always, always make sure I have a few extra. And yes, I did plant too much. Yes, I've got Kitty that loves her broccoli. But again, you have to have a place to grow it. Broccoli gets quite big, unless you're just gonna grow it for a while and then take it out. You are not supposed to handle seedlings by their trunk. You're supposed to handle seedlings by their leaves. So what's the old saying? Do as I save, not as I do. And you know what? I haven't lost a plant from that yet. So, but you, you know, that's, Technically, there's a lot of rules, which I break. I break all the rules. I always have. On everything I've ever gotten involved in, it seems like I break all the rules. Not, not, not rules like driving, actually. I haven't had a ticket. But um, rules as far as nature and different things, you have to step back and look at it. And I've never had a problem with that. So just hold them and handle them gently. And you know what? I had a squash once that was broke, and I grew it, and it regrew leaves you never know. So as your season comes and wherever you are in the world will be different. I'm starting my seeds now. We're still in January and that's okay because a lot of things I can start like broccoli, mustard, all your brassicas you can start. That doesn't mean they're going to grow big. You know, we're going to be like 38 degrees. It's not going to grow big. They don't like it either. They should have been really, oh, this one doesn't, it has a little bit of a root. It doesn't look that good, but we'll see what happens doesn't make it I can pop something else in here later you know they're gonna be kind of slow and then as spring comes in because we're not going from winter to summer that's when they'll take off and they'll do really really good the little ones the ones you already have established if you do in your garden like I have in the bird garden they're massive because they've already got a good root system I got one more tiny one is it worth it yeah I guess so one more tiny broccoli you know, they have a massive root system already, so they just love the cold weather. The cold weather is wonderful. So next time when you wanna start making sure you have a vegetable garden, especially brassica for the winter, start them in the fall as the weather just starts to cool. Or start them and keep them in a cool area. Now these are not, of course, going out anywhere yet. Like I said, I don't have things together. A lot of my totes last year, my containers also, I didn't, change a lot of them when i say change i didn't pull everything out that was growing and start over and some of them though they did really good to be honest i'll tell you the ones that i start over that doesn't mean emptying the tote just starting new plants over always look better where's that little plant there it is so i'm gonna start a lot of them over and i'll probably do it in the next month or so but I'm already starting some seeds. I've got pansy seeds I planted. They're coming up very slowly. They're not happy with the cold either. I don't know if this one will make it. But like I said, I can always pop something in. So now I've got all these. And they're going in a cold frame, a mini greenhouse I made on the deck. So I can keep an eye on them because I'm going to do a whole lot more things on the deck. It's easier because I can even do it 10 o'clock at night if I have nothing to do. I can step out on my deck and do that. And I'm, I'm gonna have probably, when I'm done, I'm probably gonna end up, I want this out. I'm just gonna sit it in here right now. I will probably end up doing a lot of seeds that way and then moving them later and I'll probably end up making another 
one or two more on the deck. These are in these cone cups. Oh, I do have cups I can I'm trying to get rid of these cone cups. Bought these at the thrift store. See, these cups, though they look paper, they're not. They're actually plastic. When they break down, there will be a plastic film. If you plant them with the cup, you break the bottom out, which you can, you'll find a little piece of film. Thinner than plastic bags. Really thin. And you can pick it up and throw it away. But the thing I do like, and I've talked about this, is if I took this right now, and let's say I had my totes ready to go and I planted it, I could just bust the whole bottom out, take that bottom out, and then just drop it in the soil and leave that. Now, if a roly-poly came, they're not real smart. They don't crawl up. Or cutworms, they don't generally crawl up. This plant will be protected. On top of that, when I water this little tiny plant very gently, and the water comes out the bottom, it will still spread its roots, but I know this plant got water. If it was in a container or in the ground and I water it, the water may run off. Like you don't know what's underground. So it looks like water goes in and then underground, you got a little river going that way. That's why I've had great success using paper cups. But if it gets massive, you can always take it out of the paper cup and either use it again or discard it. Now these is what I was saying, are real paper. I bought these at a thrift store and this, there's no plastic, look at that. These are real paper and they will completely disintegrate. They're disintegrating as my little mustard here is growing. It was so cheap, it was like a dollar for, I don't know, was it a hundred or two hundred? And I just had to buy it. So now I can't stand them anywhere because they're made for, you know, those hanging around the water fountain at work, you know, the water cooler and they're water cooler cups. And, and so that's why I bought them because, they, well, they can't stand, but I like the idea that, I like the idea they were so cheap. So right now I'm just going to sit them in there like that. And then when I find an air, a place to plant them, I'm going to plant cup and all. This will completely break down. Just like the paper cup wrappers. They're completely being eaten by the soil. What's in here is no earthworms. What is eating this up is microbes. That's the only thing eating that up. And that's okay. What you don't want right now in your seedlings, seedlings that are this small or this small, you don't want to really go out and take soil from your garden because too many times you won't know that there's, there could be an earwig, roly-poly, something in there that's gonna eat it. And you'll go out there and something ate your plant. So I always try to use some sort of potting soil when I'm starting them here. Once you put them in the garden, it doesn't matter. And this way, when you put them in your little greenhouse, or your container, or wherever you're gonna put them, you'll know that nothing's gonna come up and eat them. So I would suggest using potting soil. If you're starting seeds, you can sift it yourself or just take out the pieces like I was doing. They grow really good. And if you find some pieces of wood chips and stuff in your soil, just take it out. And try not to kill your plant. <laughs> but there's so many things you can do that are so much cheaper than going out and buying a bag of seeds starting mix which isn't that important. Then I see some people buying seed starting mix and then they're adding vitamins and you know plant food to it. They don't need it. If it's there, it doesn't hurt them, I found it, as long as there's not too much. But all you have to do is just sift it out and don't toss out what you sift out of that soil. When you sift it out of the soil, you use it for other plants. Use it for when they get bigger. And this is just potting soil. But see, there's always gonna be pieces you can go through it. And if you're doing really fine seeds, you can totally strain this out. But see, that's pretty good right the way it, it, it is. And that's how I grew this. This is just plain potting soil. It's not sifted or anything. That's why you see big chunks in here. So, oh, there's another broccoli here. Do I want to plant that one? No, oh, why not? So that's it. So plant more than what you need. Oh, and now i got to find another cup. Make sure you do get more. And this way you'll be happy. You're not going to be happy if you go out there and your one little plant disappeared. And like I said, sometimes you don't even have, um, you know, the op enough time to start all over. So you want to make sure that as long as you're happy gardening, you'll keep gardening. And I would rather always have too much of this completely, whether it's too much food, too many plants because you can always give it away. You can compost it. A lot of people grow seeds right now in their soil and then compost them in just because they're making, you know, green manure. So think of it that way. 
but yeah, get some seeds and be selective. When you're planting them in the house, you're starting seeds in a tray or plastic bag, or, you know, I do them in plastic bags too. Think of it that way, that when you get a big packet of seeds, certain seeds will last for years. Lettuce seeds will last for years. Onion seeds only one to two years, but you'll have the option that if you don't use it all this year, you'll have it for next year or maybe even later on in the year. So I hope I gave you some ideas. I'm gonna go put this in my new cold frame that I just, it's actually a mini greenhouse. It has been working fantastic. I do cuttings and everything in it. If you wanna know how to build that exactly, let me know. And I did kind of do a couple footage things on building it because there is little hints on that too. And this way you can be successful and you don't have to have a big greenhouse. All you need is a tote. So with that, I am going to go get these all in their little new place. And hopefully I'll have a fun, I'll be able to find a place for them soon. Have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Okay. I don't know where I'm going to put all these.